believe I owe Keisha an apology. And the reason why I owe Keisha an apology is because I kept referring to her as an outside baby. And I don't think I realized how hurtful and painful that can be to call somebody an outside child. So I do owe her an apology. Listen, the real villain, the real the the culprit here is actually Frank. And that's who we really need to be giving all the icks and all the, the smoke to, okay? Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle. This is the Bell Perspective. We are here to talk about Family Empire, another own show. Girl, is very good. If you're not in it, you need to get in it. Girl, it's all about family dynamics and all that crazy stuff that go on. But anyway, I talk about reality TV, books, movies, any kind of thing on this channel. So definitely peruse the channel. Subscribe if you like the vibe. Shout out to me to the Diva. All Family okay. Empire. This episode is episode five. It is showdown at the hoedown. It wasn't that much of a showdown, but maybe it might be in the next episode, girl. So I don't know, girl. We're picking up where we left off with Chris, who is making a counter offer. So we know that Chris is Jaquita's husband, who is the photographer and basically the creative director of Braden Realty Group. Okay. And Jermisha and Nicole have presented Chris with a a contract basically saying that we want you to take on full creative director um the whole the, the full creative director role we want you to do the admin work the planning the etc cetera, etc cetera, but we're trying to keep your salary the same do i think that that's a good idea hell no if you're going to have this man do additional work on top of what he was already doing but keep him at the same salary he has no incentive no, ma'am, you're ultimately admitting that Chris and his creativity basically put y'all on the map. So, girl, I don't know why you're questioning his performance. Maybe it was something that you were doing. So, I didn't like how they approached him. I did like how he was basically trying to be a good sport about it, even though they did disrespect him with that little bit of pay, but more work. Girl, I'm going to say, girl, because no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I feel like they really trying him. I really do. Now, okay, so we get to Jermisha. Jermisha's Jermisha still trying to butt up to these aunties, girls. These aunties is not playing with Jermisha. So they go, she picks up Charlotte and, um, who is it? Cheryl. Charlotte and Cheryl. Now, I can't remember who is who, okay? One of them is, get, the one in the back seat, I think it's Cheryl. I believe. I don't know, girl. Don't give me the line. She is going to have knee surgery. So she's on her way being a dutiful knee. She's going to pick up her aunt, her auntie to take us to, to the knee surgery and everything. And they're basically talking about the land, of course, because that's Jermisha's girl. Okay, Jermisha's going to talk about this land regardless of whether you want to talk about it or not, okay? She brings flowers, girl. She's doing everything she can so she can butter up these aunties so she can get them on her side so that she can then develop on this land that Miss Oscarine got. And aunties are like, listen, we hear what you're saying. We hear what you, we hear you. We hear you, but we want our inheritance, and we feel like you basically getting in between us. Okay. The other thing is, we also believe that you out of order. Okay, you out of order. The order goes G's, G one, G two, then G threes. Okay, all this y'all skipping the order, and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, girl, fuck the order, girl. Okay. Sometimes you got to switch things up in order to be, to make things happen, okay? I, I personally, and somebody said it in the comment section a while ago, they was like, these G2s, girl, it's giving. The G2s is giving, or is it the G1s? I think it's the G1s. It's like the G1s is giving very lazy, very deadbeat, okay? Because Frank is one of the G1s, girl. He is a deadbeat, girl, not good. <laughs> Just, what are you here for? And I'm not trying to pick on the generations, but girl, it's it's not them G ones. What what y'all doing? What is y'all doing? I don't know. Anyway, she keeps to my order. It's the order, girl. Fuck that order, girl. Okay, like mm -mm. especially if you're not contributing to it, girl. Please. And and Jamisha was right. She was like, it's like y'all just looking for a payout. Let me hurt. Let me stop the people. I'm talking about, let me stay out of the people's business while I'm over here talking about these people's business. Girl, I don't know. Let's move on. Jermisha in the park with Justin and the family. They got three kids and they just playing, you know, throwing the football around or whatever. And Jermisha tells Justin that 
she needs to basically come into her own more. Justin is encouraging her to come in more into her own because basically Nicole has painted herself as the face of Brayden Realty and Jermisha needs to stand out more too. Now, I ain't going to hold you. I was thinking some things and I'm going to keep that to myself for right now. I'm thinking some things. I'm going to keep it to myself for right now until we get into it. But go ahead, Jermisha, please also step forward, especially if, since you're the broker. OK, you're the you're the head of, of, of all of this. OK, now. I don't know if it was me or that little boy, but baby, that little boy, I saw he was scared of that drone. He always looked like he just not ready. Like he not trying to be here. She did that, that, that little one year old that she got. He always looked disgusted. Like, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me. All right, we get Nicole and Larry. They're meeting with the adoption attorney and the owner of the adoption firm. Larry is pissed because, well, he's not really pissed, but he's aggravated because Nicole didn't tell him about it ahead of time. He was like, my questions are going to be delayed. I didn't even have an opportunity to think about the questions. And that right there made me kind of like Larry a little bit, just a little bit, okay? Because I'm like, he really is taking this seriously. You know, he wants to ask questions, be in the know. And so I appreciate Larry for that. But their communication girl, oh my God, he was like, you didn't tell me. She was like, yes, I did. You wasn't listening. I'm like, y'all over here. Okay, now nah. y'all over here arguing politely, but I don't feel like, I feel like this is just for the camera. I feel like y'all be cussing each other out when the camera is not here, you know? So the adoption firm gets there and the attorney gets there and they basically answer all their questions about exactly what they want to do they know they don't want to try to adopt a newborn because that's basically going back and they want to make sure that Layton is comfortable with the the adoption as well she's very much an only child you know a girl and she's seven years old so you know that's that tough age girl mm, good luck but i do Cats off to people who are going through the adoption process. I have somebody that's close to me that's going through the adoption process. It's not easy, but hats off to them. The firm that they're actually partnering with are is a firm that houses black and biracial children and black and biracial couples. So I think that's pretty dope. Anyway, now we move on to Nicole and Keisha's therapy session and. This is where I was like, ooh, outside child. Okay, I see, see. Now, Keisha says she is not an outside child because Nicole Mama was never married to Frank. Nicole Mama's joy was never married to Frank. It basically was Frank was in there dicking two women down. And he got both of them pregnant at the same time. Nicole's birthday is, I think, in January. Keisha's birthday in May. Okay. And she was like, that they didn't break up no home or nothing like that. And I'm like, eh, I don't know about that, Keisha, because, and not really, you know what? I'm not even finna go in. We're not finna even do all this. What we are going to say is, Frank, you have some explanations. Okay. You owe us an explanation. You owe your kids and the women you fucked around on. You owe them explanations, okay? You wasn't no good dad. Apparently, the Keisha or Nicole or Monet, okay? The only reason why Keisha is even connected to the Braden family is because Aunt Jackie, which I believe is Jermisha and Jaquita and their mama, okay? And Frank ain't never had nothing to do with nobody, all right? And I'm just looking like, how did we allow, how did he get away with that? He did not, nobody said, nobody held his feet to the fire. Nobody said you wrong for that. Nobody called him to the car. Like, how did he get that and still able to strut around, walking around like, yup, I'm the big man. Because y'all saw him at the damn hold I was looking at him like, nigga, shut your ass up. One one here, shit your ass got to say. That's me personally. But you know, I'm, I keep a grudge. I hold the grudge like a motherfucker, girl. Don't ask me, girl. Anyway, ultimately... In my notes, I said, Frank is trash, and he owed everyone an apology and an explanation. Because what the fuck you over here doing, nigga? For real. All right? Now, Keisha tells us that Nicole's mama was never nasty to Keisha in her face, but she do believe probably behind her back, which probably, okay? And she also thought that the man that her 
her, the man that her mom was with that had her sister because Keisha got another sister with her mama. She thought that that was her dad. She again, she ended up finding out she was connected to Braden because of Aunt Jackie. Now, who girl? Ultimately, Nicole and Keisha want the same things. They want to be close to each other. They want to have a good relationship. There's a lot of walls. Trust has not been established. And they feel like neither one of each other listens to each other. So, girl, continue in this therapy journey with each other, please. My only thing about Keisha is that, Keisha, girl, now is the time to speak, okay? All this being quiet and letting people speak for you, I don't like that. I don't like that. You need to be able to speak for yourself. You really do. And I know sometimes you don't have the words and maybe you don't know what to say. But communication really isn't as hard as you think it is. Okay. Now we get to the whole down girl. Nicole is dressed girl. She got her fur on girl. She got her mink on. Love Nicole. Like I told y'all, Nicole is my favorite. I know people don't like her. I know they think she nasty, whatever, whatever, whatever. I love Nicole. She is my absolute favorite. And she is somebody who I would who la la with. She she is someone I would kick it with, okay? She get that she dressed girl. She got her little mink on child, a daughter, Layton girl, got her mink on and her boots. Child just cute, okay? Chris and Nicole have a little something. She was like, I'm glad we was able to mix it up and get it together because Girl, I didn't want to have to fire you. He was like, fire me. I wasn't going to be fired. She was like, terminated, separated, baby, whatever whatever the hell you wanted to call it, baby, it was going to happen to you. I said, Ooh, Nicole, I love Nicole, y'all. I love Nicole. So Nicole is sitting down talking. They're having a good time, taking pictures and everything. And Nicole goes to sit down and talk to Aunt Cheryl, I think, right? And you see Jermisha Jaquita talking to Aunt Nikki, and Aunt Nikki was like, Nicole over there talking to Aunt Cheryl, what the hell are they talking about, okay, and you could tell Aunt Nikki was like, so you could tell that Aunt Nikki liked Jermisha a lot, respects her, thinks that, I don't want to say she likes her more than Nicole, but I think she thinks that Jermisha needs to do step forward more, and Nicole pretty much does the, she, she's at the front line, but Aunt Nikki think Jermisha need to really be at the front line. You could tell. Does that make sense to what I'm saying? And so she was like, girl, you know what the hell Nicole over there talking about with um Aunt Cheryl? Let's come over. Let's go over there. Let's go. What the hell? See what they talking about. Now, as she's talking, Nicole is talking to Aunt Cheryl, telling her, listen, this is what we could do. You could take the property, split it in the middle, have some properties that you rent, sell to others. So you can pocket money and you keep got money going on. We can put Jermisha as the project manager. He said, oh, girl. Now, they already explained it. They don't want to be doing no project management. And I do believe Jermisha said that maybe in episode two. She ain't trying to do no project management because it's a lot of work. So I see how you did that, Nicole. All right, I'm going to put all this in here and then I'm going to let Jermisha handle it. So, oh, girl, that's kind of raggedy. But I, I, I get why she was doing that. So then... Auntie Cheryl, like, oh, that's a good idea. This is okay. That's a dope idea. Oscar ain't get that. Grandma Oscar ain't get that. She was like, oh, that's a good idea. Okay, I like that. Again, if Cheryl like it, Oscar ain't gonna go with it. Okay. So then Jaquita and Nikki and Jamisha get in there. They tell my girl, what the hell are you talking about? What y'all doing? Basically busting up the little planning session. Uh, uh, Granny Oscar Green was like, Nicole, tell them what you're doing, girl. She explains, Nicole explains. That's when Jermisha found out about them trying to appoint her as property manager. And she was like, girl, I ain't trying to do that shit. But, you know, she was like, I appreciate you doing what you're doing, but girl, uh-uh. She was like, the other thing is, Nicole, every time I come to you to talk to you about it, girl, you act like you don't got nothing to say about it, girl. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to have nothing to do with it, girl. You trying to be, uh, you you love Oscar Green over here, girl. So now all of a sudden you got a plan. You know, I'm not trying to say Nicole backdoored this thing. I really don't think so. I think Nicole really wanted to make sure that the Ainies was on top of it and also make sure that her granny was on top of it. Because I'm a, listen, coming from one granny girl, one grandma girl to another, because I'm a grandma's girl, straight up, up and down. Shout out to my grandma. Okay, her birthday was on August the 1st of this, on the 1st of this month. So I'm a granny girl. I don't care what the hell you niggas is doing, okay? As long as my grandma is okay, bitch, give a fuck what y'all doing. Long as she all right now. If y'all over here fucking up and causing chaos and confusion with my grandma, then bitch, I'm mad. I'm pissed and I'm ready to go, okay? Don't fuck with my grandma, 
All right, period. Don't do that. Y'all can do whatever the hell yeah, y'all want to do. Don't fuck with my grandma, okay? That's me. So I feel like that's the spirit Nicole was in. Like, don't be having my grandma over here stressed out trying to fool with y'all just because y'all ain't built nothing in y'all generation, okay? Anyway, so everybody starts to pile in. They're talking about the, the property. Then they get to talking about the businesses, the beauty shop, the the event space. Like, Granny, what you trying to do with all these different things? Then come Frank bummy ass and then here go justin jermisha husband and everybody was like okay this was not the original point of the conversation we didn't need everybody here we was just trying to talk about one thing with granny our screen granny getting upset she started to clap her hands and get everybody to shut up and that's where the episode ends. personally I, I feel like i do not feel like they need to sell the land i think that they should keep it in house I think that it would be because the, they've already gotten it appraised. Girl, the properties were 800000 Imagine what it would be like if you started putting houses on there, a shopping center on there, like a little plaza. Girl, that could really make a lot of money. And I don't think that people are thinking ahead of that. Okay, so if you do that, then what the hell are you going to be able to pass down to the G3s, right? They still stuck on that order thing. And I'm just like, mm, I, I get order and all that, all that, all that, over there. But also, bro, you need to be able to keep that property. It's prime real estate. Girl, I would not give that up for that. And she been able to afford the damn, the bill. It's a thirty. $35,000 tax print, uh, tax bill. Girl, you've been, you've been able to afford it. Oh no, girl. Child, I hope and pray that I I'll be able to get money like that. Open in my hands right now, girl. Open my oh you open your hands so y'all can get wealth like that. Okay, girl, I'm opening my hands. I receive it, girl. I'm ready to get land, baby. Doing that, girl. Hello, open your hands and receive that. Open your hands, girl. Come on. Anyway, y'all get in the comments. Those are my thoughts. Love this show. I think it's so interesting. I love seeing family dynamics it helps me realize that i'm not as that my family is not as dysfunctional as everybody else is okay or as i think it is okay that my family is not it helps me realize that my family is just as dysfunctional as everybody else is okay anyway get in the comments let me know what you think about the episode don't forget to like this video before you leave because girl it helps out the channel and subscribe okay let's get into it Take care. Since we last kicked it. And by the way, just got in town. And I won't let you in this cloud. It's all in the sky. Ruin my vibe. Usually, I.